I'm your host, International Master John Bartholomew. I'm playing people for two hours in two plus zero blitz. We already have a lot of challenges. Great to see. To Chichiwi, you're up first, 1876. Greetings to everyone watching on both Twitch and YouTube. We're firing it up. Yes, looks like we are live. There we go. Kicked in on both platforms. How's everyone Sunday going? I'm very happy to be here. Tachiwi is not here, it appears, although I'm sure they're very happy nonetheless. <laughs> okay, Drags is going to be the first opponent. Drags 5-4-2, good luck. I have a feeling we'll get a game here. Hello, North Carolina Dan, also Mr. Blindspot. Yes, happy Sunday to you. Zelly Live, Harrison, Harry Chess, maybe biased. Azul the King, okay, I was wrong. Drag 5-4-2 is not here. Third time's the charm? Oh, of course, Hacklar. We got to rely on Hacklar. Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, I thought Hacklar's going to write something in the chat. <laughs> okay, let's play Knight C6. We're playing maybe like a... I was looking forward to maybe playing a Sveshnikov, but then the Boulder attack appeared. Hello, Magic Summer. Also, Alexander Horse. Jobius. Oh, Hacklar wrote it in the Twitch chat. All right. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Hacklar. Yeah, over over 50 challenges already. Fantastic to see. Hello to our YouTube viewers. Justice Algieri. Also, Oren Whiteside. Nick Novotny. Nick asks, John, is this random? Don't you use a plugin of some sort? Yes, this is a random, uh, a random selection of the challenges. Everyone has an equal chance of being selected. So get your challenges in. Hello, Nim. Also, Steven. Goosh Gooser. Concool. John Stevenson, hello. Okay, this is a real common position out of the boulder attack. You can expect to see this frequently, this type of position. Now, I could take f3 and then go knight d4. That might actually be a pretty good option here. But I'm going to try to keep a little more tension. I'll play bishop h5. Hello, BD Gambiteer. It's buttery. GK Pro. And yeah, greetings to everyone watching on YouTube in the future. The archive version. G4 played, okay. Yeah, you know, this this G4 move is probably the best approach of all. Let's play H6, just stop the bishop from coming to G5. It's a little risky for white in terms of king safety, but it makes a lot of sense. Okay, knight e2, interesting. Trying to come here, I suppose. All right, let's castle. No, going over to g3. Yeah, I'm thinking now I might try to stuff this bishop on b3. Let's play b5, looking for c4. That's right. We do accept any challenge. So if a GM, a 3,000 rated player wants to come challenge me, I'm fully willing to play them. <laughs> Likewise, if a, a 600 rated player wants to play me. We don't discriminate here. And you don't have to be a Lee Chess patron or a subscriber or anything like that. That. No, we play anyone. The only stipulation, stipulations, has to be a 3 plus 0 game. And it has to be standard chess, so no variance. Okay, king g2. Let's go queen c7. Attack this this um, knight on, C, on g3. Not planning to take it yet, but maybe in the future. Hmm. So I feel like I'm somewhat better here, but I'm debating how I want to play in terms of this d3 pawn. I could take queen takes and then c4 maybe. Mm, there's like queen b1. I'm not so convinced by that. Let's actually play d4. I'll try to just block this bishop entirely. Pawn d4. I just watched your recent Climbing the Rating Ladder King's Indian Attack game. Heart rate still elevated from the time scramble. Yeah, that was an intense one. That was an intense game. All right, I'm going to take, because Hacklar can't take with the queen due to the bishop being undefended. Okay, so there. Probably take now. And should I seize the file? Rook e8. Actually, let's go rook b8. I feel like the pressure here is going to be more annoying for my opponent to deal with. Play a5. 
Hecklar's pretty fast, so we need to keep that in mind. I have under a minute. Good afternoon, Cormac. Hello, Chose no, no Warrior. All right, let's take here. I think this will be simple. Get this over. Maybe infiltrate with a check or possibly queen c6. I'm liking both those options. Ooh, king in the open board. I feel like we got to have something good here. Let's give a check. Ooh, king f3. Hacklar, my friend. Let's take this. Here, here. Give the check. Yeah, and this will win. Pre move this one. That's a safe pre move. I think rook f3. Probably easiest after that. Be nice if we had rook e1 mate, but there is the rook on b1 guarding. <laughs> Aklar, uh inquiring about the famous video that I have yet to see. Still getting around to it. All right. Yeah, thanks, Hecklar, for the game. I think probably knight f4 was a little more ambitious here. Is your knight coming to g3? Maybe later knight f5 was a thing, but probably if you're going to play knight f4, that makes a little more sense because hits the bishop and also d5. Seems like the engine does pretty clearly prefer black here. Uh, so the way that I played against the boulder in this game, I would recommend play e6, block the bishop on this diagonal, maybe throw in a6 just in case you want to rule out bishop b5, work up to the d5 move. I do think this is quite a good plan. Okay, thanks for the game. Let's keep rolling here. We're up to 71 challenges. Harrison, or Harrison, good luck to you. Another e4 game. Let's play Sicilian once again. I'm happy to take some uh, opening recommendations if you guys have them. Wagon Gambit. I still don't know what the Wagon Gambit is, so I'm going to have to punt on that one. <laughs> Just being honest. I'm sorry, Jonathan Schrantz. Let's take here. Okay, so white has an isolate upon. Not an uncommon occurrence in the Alapin. Hello, Michael Machos. Also, NM Robert Ramirez in the chat. Your video looks a bit unsharp. Hmm, could be the lighting. Let me adjust my webcam slightly. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why that would be. It actually looks pretty normal on my end, but I don't know. Maybe a focus thing? I'll try not to mess with it too much. Okay, knight f3. Yeah, so this is this is some pretty textbook IQP stuff. I've got the knight on d5 blockading the pawn. There's some potentially sharp stuff that can happen here, but I feel okay. You want a Scandi, uh, Baghdad opening, Karakhan, Larson attack. Larson I can work in. Karakhan I can work in as well. Uh, Fajerowix, English. Black Mar, Demar Gambit, London. Okay, we've got lots of different suggestions. Yeah, those of you who are saying there's a resolution problem, maybe refresh your stream. That sometimes helps. Yeah, everything looks normal on my end, so might be a connection thing. Okay, bishop c4. So I can think about inserting bishop takes f3 followed by knight takes d4 at any moment here. Definitely considering it. Eh, white gets a little play in the center of the board, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just play knight takes c3. I like playing against these pawns as well, so this feels pretty ideal to me. I'm going to do that. Everything looks fine. Okay, cool. I won't stress about it. <laughs> Appreciate it, guys. Am I going to sacrifice for content? I can try to do that. Yesterday, I played an interesting gambit against the Dutch defense on my personal channel. I played the line d4, f5, h3, followed by g4 on the next move. 
And that turned out very interesting. So I would not be opposed to trying something like that again. Not as crazy as other gambits you might play. Shout out to our Lee Chess mods, by the way. Lopare, if you're there. No joke, Chess. Always appreciate you guys. Thanks to Lee Chess and Tebow. Um, let's play A6. I have a feeling C4 might come at some point soon. Those of you looking to work on your sense of danger, improving your sense of danger in chess, you might be interested in solving some of the themed puzzles. So if you go into puzzles and then puzzle dashboard, uh, there's an option where you can, you can sort by puzzle motif. And I would highly recommend the uh, hanging piece themed puzzles for working on your sense of danger. I've been doing this with a lot of my students lately. And many of you may not know this, but there are so many different categorizations of puzzles on Lee Chess, all completely for free, as usual, as everything is on Lee Chess. Definitely check it out. If you are prone to blundering pieces, if you uh, struggle to identify the opponent's threat or threats, drilling those mo modules would be a good idea. And remember, every puzzle on Lee Chess comes from an actual Lee Chess game, which it links to and you can solve for and, and see if the players played it. Did you say Tebow like Tim Tebow? No, I meant Tebow, the creator of uh, Lee Chess. I haven't seen him around very often in uh, the last year or so, but you know he's working diligently on the site. Okay, this trade I think is greatly going to favor me because I got the simple plan of bringing the rooks over to pressure the pawn. White's going to have to go bishop d2 to defend, but it's a, a miserable defensive position. Let's uh, let's play queen d5. Look for a trade, and it'd be very easy for white to blunder something here. Let's go here. Okay, interesting move. I think I'll go here now. Threaten the pawn on uh, d4. Trying to go after this rook and also this pawn. Yeah, white's position collapsing. It was looking pretty tough, though. Very tough position to hold. Advance. Advance. Rook comes down. Okay, thank you, Harrison, for the game. So in this one, I played this, uh, like, Magnus variation. What do they call this exactly? Just Alapin. Yeah, it's, it's a variant of the Alapin where you play d5 and then you play knight f6, intending to take on d5 with the knight. The main move by far is queen takes d5. But you can see in the master's database, another nice feature that you can check out, the various databases on Lee Chess, including the Lee Chess database. You can see that knight f6 is played and it leads to more decisive games. Like white wins more compared to queen takes d5, but also black wins a lot more. That's actually a pretty impressive winning percentage for black. Few draws in this line. So it's interesting. Yeah, so this this actually transposed into like panov botvinnik variation territory with bishop g4, where queen b3 is the main move. So interesting transposition there. I don't think I've ever seen that. Going from an alapin to a panov botvinnik There's a new book about that. Oh, interesting. Someone wrote an entire book on this variation. That's impressive. All right. Thanks for the game, Harrison. I do think later on, probably... Hmm. I don't know. I was going to give you a bit of feedback on your play. Yeah, good luck, JJR. I think those pawns just proved to be too weak. Definitely taking on C4, Harrison, was probably the fatal strategic mistake. The anti-Alapin Gambit 
Death to the C3 Sicilian by Karsten Hansen and Cyr Cyrus Lakdawalla. Wow, that's a pretty aggressive title. <laughs> okay, this is a Benko Gambit now by Transposition. I used to play this line from the black side a fair amount. This G3 variation used to be all the rage. And it's interesting for sure. I'm going to try to send this knight over here because there's a line where white plays rook b1 and then b3 that you can try to disrupt by sending this knight over and sending this one here. Yeah, I think my opponent's aware of this line. Rook b1. Yes, thank you for the game, Harrison. I do appreciate it. Danya recommends this line. Do you mean the Alapin in general, or he recommends that from the black side? All right, now I get to play knight c4, and I feel like this is pretty nice. Ooh. Very happy to get that dark square bishop. I can think about queen a5 already. I do like the look of that. Attack this with tempo. I have the bishop pair. Good compensation for the pawn. Waiting the fourth stream to play with you. Okay, today might be the day. I appreciate everyone watching, even if you don't end up challenging or don't happen to get a game. Oh, he recommends that for black. Interesting. I will make a mental note of that, because, yeah, I think it's a pretty good line for black. Hello, Jesse. Also, Belgian novice. Good to see you in the chat. All right, let's just castle here. So if white castles, I can trade everything on c3 if I want and take on e2, which I think I will do. Normally, you're hesitant to part with this dark square bishop, but I think this is an excellent circumstance to play this way. Yeah, and white saw the problem. They're coming over here. But I feel this is a pretty nice situation for me. Let's go here. Block the a pawn, get ready to double. If rook e3, I'll take here. And that's the plan. Okay, retreats. Probably take now, and then here. I love this position. Compact setup for me. Some pawn islands for white. This actually has an eerie resemblance to um, what I was mentioning in that aforementioned Dutch game that I played the other day. And okay, now I think I can take here because of the undefended rook. Yeah, let's do it. Pre-move this capture. So white is going to be suffering this ending. Maybe a4 is white's best move here. Yep, white plays it. I'm going to block. Now, a very natural move would be this, but it blunders. Yeah, I had a feeling white might play bishop b5 there. Because it's, it's a natural anchoring move trying to have the, the pawn defend the bishop. But that, again, shows the deficiency of having that rook on a1 undefended. Yes, thank you for the game, JGR. Tough one, tough one. I think this variation is still one of the better tries for black in this line. It's a weird maneuver. Knight f6, knight fd7. I played this in an OTB game probably some 11 years ago. Because uh, I think Boris Avrok came out with a d4 book. And he was recommending g3, bishop g2 against the Benko. And uh, people were looking for an antidote from the black side. Nowadays, I got to say, I think the bank Benko is a very risky opening for black at master level and higher. Uh, you don't see it too often from the top players because the engines just pretty much eviscerate the gambit. I think in correspondence play, the Benko is borderline unplayable for black. It's too risky. But yeah, giving up your dark square bishop there was a big problem. Okay, Brant, good luck. Pin after pin, that's right. That was decided by two pins there. The Apician variation was killer for the Banco. Which line is that? All right, Brant, we're going to have to abort. You can always re-challenge. Chess aggressor, let's go. Oh, with Rook B1, is that what it's called? The Apician variation? 
play an open Sicilian. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to have a dragon. Dragodorf, actually. dragon Night Orf combo. Okay. Bring it. Let's do it. I don't know about taking here. I haven't seen that approach too often. Taking that early. I'll play king b1. Almost always a useful move. Now, there is this queen alignment along the diagonal here. Black has to constantly watch white playing knight d5. For example, if black were to castle right now, knight d5 might come into the picture. And that could be trouble. See, I'm already thinking about, let's say, bishop takes f6, bishop takes f6, knight d5. Queen takes d2, take f6, check. Try to grind down an edge there. I think it's possible. I'm not super inspired by that variation, so I don't know if I'll play it. Could go g4. That might be a little more interesting. Yeah, let's play g4. I think that's a little more exciting here. Now here, I think knight d5 is, is good. So if knight takes, I'm going to take on g7. Norderbeck played the, the Benko in the WR Masters. Hmm, I must have missed that game. I'll have to check it out. All right, who's done their tactics? I think this queen and also the threat on c7 is going to hurt. But let me just get the move order right. Eh, I mean, here, queen a4 is not so clear. Seems like it should lose on the spot for black, but it's actually not that clear. I'm still going to play it, though. I still think it's the best move. <clears throat> Thing is, after queen a4, I can go win the exchange, or play b3 and then go win the exchange, but there's certain pressure here coming down these diagonals, so it's not clear cut. I might want to go queen takes b4 here, but that feels like, feels like I'm letting black off easily. I don't know. Hmm. Knight check and take the bishop. B3, queen a3. I don't know that that helps me much. I could do that and then take on b4. Maybe I should play that way. Yeah, I think that might be reasonable. I don't want to spend too much time here. There is the possibility of coming back here, but black does not avail themselves of that. Wait, can black go queen b2? Nah, that can't be a serious idea, can it? Queen b2 takes, knight takes d5. I can go queen d4 there. I just need to play a little faster. Rook b8, I can go here. It's a little tangled. I mean, this is slightly more complicated than I would like, but I think I'm still a lot better here. This square's covered. As black just found out. <laughs> All right, not over yet, though. Let's bring this back. Could he take on d5? Interesting. I don't know. I'll go, I'll go back and check that afterwards. Make sure I convert this position first. That was one of those moments where I felt like black was missing a lot of the tactics, but it was still complicated. I still had to try to figure out my way through. It was not simple. Let's go g5 here. On a g5, hit the knight. Okay. Let's take here. And then... Hmm. Let's go here. Take back. This is a bit of a weak pawn, but I think it's fine. Eventually, we're going to try to unlock the three versus the one. Trader rooks would be excellent here. If I could get the rooks off the board, that would be fantastic. Very happy to trade knights, get rid of the pesky knights and time pressure. We do not like knights when time is low. Roll the pawns. Roll them. 
I'm going to play king b2, maybe rook a1, get behind the a pawn, and push, push, push. Push him. Bishop c8, rook b8. Black king kind of trapped in. There's no stalemates. No stalemate. No stalemate. All right, checkmate. Thank you for the game. Let's take a look. What do you guys think? I mean, again, feels like I'm a lot better here, but the position remained complicated even after I got knight d5, bishop b6 in. Okay, so it actually does want me to go for this line. Take, and then here. Take, take, take. Here, king e7. Oh, is there something I'm missing? Oh, rook takes d2 right away. Not even knight takes f6 check. Okay, rook takes d2. I guess because I have the dual threats of knight c7 and taking on f6, and that probably guarantees the win of a pawn. Interesting. Black has to attend to this threat, and then we take and take here. That, that escaped my attention. But be aware of that device, the tactics involving the knight discovering the black queen on a5, which is undefended. That's why king b1 is a helpful move for white in many cases, because queen takes d2 will not come with check, right? So black can't interrupt this sequence and come with check. I guess as it happens here, that might not even affect things much, but that is why king b1 is often handy. Now, as played... What about this position? Yeah, bishop b6 or queen takes b4. Okay, I played queen takes b4 here. Engine says double question mark. It does say knight takes d5. Yeah, so someone mentioned knight takes d5. That would have been interesting. I take the queen, then check here. Oh, because of bishop h6. Nasty move. Pretty sure that escaped my attention. If king here, the rook hangs. So rook d2. Oh, and I can't take the bishop. Look at that. Can't take the bishop because of knight, b4, knight b1. <laughs> so I would have to play king b2 in this position. I know we're down the tactical rabbit hole. And white is still better here, but wow, what a sequence. Yeah, queen takes b4 did feel a little loose. I wasn't completely satisfied at this point. The engine wants me to go check and then e5. Uh-huh, to block this. Very dangerous to leave that diagonal open because if I play knight takes a8, typical dragon tactic, knight takes e4 coming in. Hit the queen. Most importantly, the queen and the dark square bishop link up. Black threatens queen b2 mate. So we're seeing a lot of common dragon motifs here. I'm going to go on to the next game because I can spend the next 10 minutes talking about that one. Thanks for the game. All right, Glitcho, you're up next. Let's do it. Someone asked, why not go for the exchange there? Yeah, kind of based on those lines I was just showing, it looked very dangerous to do so. Any particular reason why knights are bad in time pressure? Well, it's useful to have a knight when you're low on time because a knight can reach any square on the board, unlike a bishop, right? So the unpredictable nature of the knight, uh, I think makes it a pretty good weapon in a time scramble. And... I think you'll see most strong players agree, especially at blitz and bullet time controls, that they would much rather have a knight when time is getting low, everything else being equal, than a bishop. A bishop is more of like a rapid, classical weapon. The advantages of the, the, uh, the fabled bishop pair and exerting the influence, the pressure of having, having especially both bishops on board, that is more of like a long-term advantage than a short-term one. So I always joke that the knight's value is like inversely correlated with the time control, but I think there's some truth there. But just think of any time scramble. Think of a position with like a bishop in three pawns on one side against a knight in three pawns on the same side. Maybe the pawn structure is locked. In a bullet game, that type of situation is so difficult for the bishop because the knight can just bounce around anywhere. And provided it doesn't get trapped or lost, uh, 
you never know like where it's going to pop its head out. Tough to defend. Whereas the bishop, for the side with the knight, it's real predictable because the bishop's always stuck on its own color square. Can you talk about a particularly memorable game you've played, either because it was a great victory or a tough loss? Yeah, you know, I've been lucky to have a lot of games like that in my chess career. I think I've talked about many of them on stream before. I would say winning the U.S. National High School Championship when I was in ninth grade, I was 15 years old. It was my first year that I was actually in high school and, like, not eligible for the tournament, but first, like, official year of playing in that tournament. I ended up winning it with 7-0. and So playing the final round game was pretty cool, like up on the stage and just for all the marbles, I ended up winning a nice game. The player I, who I was playing was a senior. And it was actually her birthday as well. <laughs> so I really probably crushed her hopes that day. <laughs> but, you know, chess... Chess can be ruthless like that. Was it a Scandi? It was not. I think it was a French. I remember because it was a seven-round tournament, and I had four whites, three blacks, and every game I had on the white side was a French. But it was interesting because there was a moment in that game so we were the only perfect scores in the tournament at that point. I was 6-0. and She was 6-0. and Ooh, tactical alert. Take, take, take. So we were the only perfect scores. Black's going to take here, but then I get to take this one. Um, so in theory, like if we both draw, it guarantees us a tie for first. And there was a moment where late in the game, I offered to repeat the position once. Okay? And she could have taken me up on that and just repeated and it would have put me at a difficult decision because I think I was slightly better or I felt I was slightly better, but the position was risky. And she didn't repeat. She played some other move and it was a really bad move and I ended up winning. So it's just like one of those what could have been scenarios. It would have been interesting had she repeated what I would have done. I still don't really know to this day. I would have made a game time decision. Yeah, so Black's setup in this game looked a little suspicious playing... Bishop g4, and then bishop takes f3. Kind of passive. Glitcho, I wouldn't recommend moving this light square bishop out this early. Usually you want your knight out first. Yeah, I think this, this setup is just generally pretty unpleasant for black. Thanks for the game. Hello, Esperto. This is our fifth game together. Good luck to you. What was I rated around then? I was rated about 2100 USCF, US Chess Federation rating. I was not yet a master. And I think I was around the 10th seed in that tournament. All right, D4. Um, let's play E6. Maybe go into a Dutch. Knights are tricky. You see it all the time. In Blitz Bullet, GM's getting forked. Darn Knights. Yes, I completely agree. They are very tricky. Can you play an English rat? I would love to. I would love to play an English rat. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, I have a student who plays this from the black side. I think I, I tried to play this last week, and I kind of messed up the move order. Hey, what's up, Glitch? Says, just impossible to concentrate while playing against you. Feels like a 30-second game. Yeah. Yeah, kudos to you guys for challenging and being willing to play on the spot. I know it's not easy. Okay, a lot of people do this, like play queen c2, but then they take with the pawn. I think in general, that's just a bad idea. Uh, let's go c5. Usually, if you're going through the effort to play queen c2, you should take with the queen. Keep your pawns together. Yeah, right, Orion? Yeah. I actually looked up my opponent in that game. Uh, recently to see if she's like been playing. You can like see on the USCF website if someone's been active. And she hasn't played in, I think, over 20 years in a tournament. So I think she kind of moved away from chess over time. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm sure not because of that game, but... Okay. 
Ace Fox says, the explanations from great players seem so simple. Is there actually other stuff you just aren't saying? Oh, yes, I'm sure there's other stuff that, you know, I'm mentioning in passing. But maybe I'm not elaborating on to a full extent. But I try to dictate my thoughts pretty, pretty closely. But there's a lot of stuff at the subconscious level for sure that I'm not, a not able to articulate in the moment because it's too much information. But I try to pick out the big picture stuff. Don't tell us your game was the reason for quitting. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think she played after that a little bit too. But yeah, that was, in terms of like a single game, one of my more memorable games. There's another game too I beat Grandmaster Alexander Shabalov when he was US champion. That's one of my more memorable victories. I was also in high school. What's my least memorable game? When I was about 2,000 rated, I lost to like a 1,200 in the first round of a tournament. That was brutal. That was brutal. Even though he was underrated, that was just a rough game. <laughs> and to make matters worse, it was a Scandinavian. Fortunately, I didn't give up the Scandi, but that was psychologically difficult to overcome. <laughs> That's got to kill your confidence for the tournament. Yeah, it was rough. Because it was um, like a scholarship tournament too. So do you guys know, probably only the Americans will be familiar with this, but there's a chain of hotels called American Inn. American. Like America and Inn <laughs> in the title. Uh, they used to sponsor a chess tournament every year where like every American in location, I think in the country had like a qualifier tournament. It was a scholastic tournament for different age groups. And you could qualify for this national competition, which was in uh, Minneapolis every year where I'm from. So I played in that for several years and um, it was a great time. It was a really cool like series of events. I guess their management just took an interest in chess for a few years and Literally, we're having a qualifier at every one of their locations throughout the country. So that was the first round in one of the, the finals of that tournament. And I think I won my remaining games, but it wasn't enough to get first place. All right, let's see if I can bait White into taking this pawn. And then I'm going to play uh, rookie eight. Okay. Check. And mate. Thank you, Quello, for the game. Yeah, so you might have had some chances later. The position did become kind of open in the center. But I do think when you go queen c2, taking on c3, you should take with a queen. That would be a better option. Take with a queen. Keep your structure together. There's quite a few games that have been played that way. Yeah, a5, I think, is one of the main moves here. Some games with B takes C3. White doesn't score terribly in this, actually. I mean, Ding played it at one point. So it probably can't be all that bad, but I don't know. Yeah, and my C5 move hasn't been played before, so maybe that's not even a good approach. Black usually playing Knight C6. Probably trying for E5 or possibly Knight A5 in some cases. Maybe that 1200 was Hans. I don't think Hans was born at that time. <laughs> We're talking like 2002 or three, maybe. So if Hans was born, like he was an infant. <laughs> so no, it was, it was not Hans. Hello, Helton. Thank you for tuning in from Brazil. 
Yeah, thanks for the game. Again, maybe you had some chances in the middle game. Actually, it looks like when I play D takes E5, the computer says you're doing fine. Bishop E4. Go after this. Uh-huh. And then discovered attack, and you're cooking here. Probably because I have a bunch of weaknesses. All right, thanks for the game. All right, Kira, you're up next. Good luck to you. Wow, time is flying by. I just looked down at my clock. We're already 40 minutes into the stream. Thanks again to everyone for tuning in today. This is always a fun time. Carol Khan, for those of you who wanted a Carol. I've commented on this on my channel, but you see so many of these games where people just take on D5 in the Carol all the time. You get these reverse Carlsbad structures. Just a absolutely pervasive way of playing. And it's fine. I mean, it's not a terrible line, but it can lead to pretty predictable structures. So you should have an idea what to do from, from the black side. Reversed Carlsbad structure. Usually black's trying to plant a knight into c4 or uh, minority attack. As black, I get bored. Yes, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Absolutely. Okay, this should be nice for me because I think white's going to have some trouble with this pawn now. I've got this beautiful light square bishop. Let's see what I want to do next. Maybe, hmm. Rook b8, I feel like b3 might be played. Let's go queen b6. Just attack here. And then... Uh, okay, I, I think I'll play this now. I'm not thrilled about this move. I would like to prevent b3. Or at least when white plays b3, I already have my rook here. But I think it's the best way of playing. Taylor says, I really like the advanced Karo. Yes, advanced Karo is strong. Probably the best line against the Karo Khan, I would say. How do you deal with distractions or interruptions during a game of chess, such as noise or outside factors? I've never been the type to be really bothered by that stuff that much. I know people are very sensitive to it. Uh, some people are very sensitive to it. To me, unless it's like someone banging on the playing, playing site's door or like a wedding going on in the ballroom next to the playing site, which happens surprisingly often at chess tournaments, by the way, specifically weddings, playing loud music. Unless it's something really egregious like that, I don't get bothered. But if you're prone to getting distracted by noise, chess tournaments are a pretty rough atmosphere because there's so many people like nervously coughing, just <clears throat> blowing their nose. A quarter of the tournament tends to be sick at any given point. Yeah, it can be rough. Why didn't I take this pawn? Wait, just moved that knight away from guarding the pawn. I didn't take it. Are earplugs allowed? Yes, earplugs are allowed. You see a fair amount of people using them. Man, the nervous coughing thing is so annoying. You got, if, you, if, if someone here has played tournament chess, you know what I'm talking about. So many people just default to nervous coughing in the course of a game. And it's amazing how the coughing, the frequency and intensity of it increases when it's their opponent's move. <laughs> or time is dwindling low. Sometimes when I'm playing an over-the-board tournament, I'll just pause and like consciously listen to all the background noise. and It's hilarious. Okay, I was threatening 92, so that's a good move by White. I think I'm just going to trade Rooks on B1 here. I think this is a pretty, pretty decent decision. This D4 is weak. I'm already up a pawn. We'll just try to gradually win this. Uh, let's go here. Threaten a back rank. Also this. Danae, first time chatter, says, as someone whose throat tightens up while nervous, let me tell you, it's no fun for the person coughing either. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I imagine there's some legitimate cases of that.
Can't imagine back in the day smoking at the table. Yeah, can you imagine? You see all those old chess photos with the ashtrays next to the board. That must have been an even more distracting atmosphere. Imagine getting like a plume of smoke blown in your face <laughs> when you're trying to concentrate. Or the kids always do adjust, adjust. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of little kids that just have little kid behavior that you have to deal with at tournaments. Absolutely. They're fidgety. They're moving the pieces with Cheeto dust on their hands. I'm winning every white pawn here. <laughs> Literally took all the white's pawns. There we go. Just put this rook behind the pawn. Push, push, push. And Kira resigns. Thank you for the game. So again, that structure, pretty favorable for black, especially when bishop takes c4, b takes c4 is played. I think black should be pretty much winning in this situation because white doesn't have much pawn play to speak of. It's, it's a pretty rough spot. Knight c5 is interesting, though. And I'm not going to claim I converted this in the best possible way. I mean, maybe... Yeah, actually, at this point, white is doing okay because they can play the move c4. They can try to break out with c4. Yeah, so I had some misgivings about playing rook b8. It does seem like that's a slight mistake. Allowing white to mobilize those pawns. But once b3 fell and then the c-pawn, it was probably too much. Okay, thanks for the game, Kira. Who's up next? Beat Magnus, all in caps. All right, good luck to you. Good thing I'm not Magnus. He didn't resign, he flagged. Oh, I thought that opponent resigned right before they flagged. Did I see that incorrectly? All right. Beat Magnus is not there. Let's go against Shady Igbaria. Good luck to you. Chat GPT was impressed with your victory against Lazaro Bruzon during the 2015 Millionaire Chess Open. You were black and had a few sacrifices to gain control of the center. That was not me. <laughs> I'm. That's almost like a gaslight comment because I'm wondering now if there's a game where I beat a GM, Lazaro Bruzone, that I do not remember whatsoever. But the specificity of that comment and the fact that I did play that tournament makes me wonder if I've just completely forgotten a game in my chess career. <laughs> Someone should look that up so they can restore my sanity. AI is trying to comment now. Yeah. <laughs> Chat GPT, tell me about a victory of John Bartholomew's that's, that was memorable in his chess career. And that's what they came up with. <laughs> okay, I didn't play bishop takes c5 there because bishop takes g7 was possible. But now we can take here. Maybe it was Bon Bartholomew who played that one. Dude, that comment rattled me. I honestly, I'm like, am I getting forgetful? Is my memory in chess going? That's the ultimate uh, fear for a chess player. Hmm. <laughs> I asked it what games it was impressed with. Oh, yeah, yeah. So someone in the, in the Twitch chat was correct that you did that. <laughs> well, ChatGPT has some work to do. Okay, this position looks really nice. I'm thinking about playing Knight B4 at some point soon. I just got to wait for the right time to unleash it. That attacks my Knight. Maybe I go here. Let's do this one.
AI already getting into our heads. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I think that move's going to lose material. I can take d4 and then take on c3. Right? Take. And then boom. Because queen takes c3, I take with a queen, and this is pinned. Another impressive game that John played was against Grandmaster Samuel Shankland in the 2016 U.S. Championship. Well, that's an easy one to dispel because I didn't play that tournament. But that Millionaire Tournament I did play. So that's what was so jarring about that. But yeah, I've never played a U.S. Championship. <laughs> Conjol Train. Yeah, that's another tournament I never played, the Isle of Man tournament. All right, let's go here. Just need to defuse this attack. I think I'm going to go Knight F8, because as we know, Knight on F8, there is no mate. Even if this queen swings over here, this is still not a checkmate. So let's play Queen D2, maybe. Come in here. You are a Stockfish subscriber? What does that mean? <laughs> Hello, Iodeji. Thanks for tuning in, by the way. All right. Queen takes d4. Looks pretty good. Let's just play this just in case Shady gets greedy. Now, White really can't justify a queen trade. So... I think I'm going to be able to pick off further material. Oh. All right. Thanks for the game, Shady. So this was a Nimzo Larson. What can I say about this? Personally, I don't think going for D4 is a good plan when you've already done this. Like B3, Bishop, B2. I would generally avoid playing d4 and blocking that bishop. The players who I see play this line, they usually go like knight f3, maybe bishop g2, knight h4. Sometimes they'll even play um, h4 and try to creep up the side here. They tend to keep these center pawns a little more flexible, a little more back on the third rank, perhaps. All right, thanks for the game. Liam, this is our first game against one another. Let's play. Okay, someone wanted a Nimzo Larson from the white side, so I guess I'll play that. Oh, yeah, I haven't tried any of these, like, chat GPT chess games yet. I know people have been trying that out, making videos on it. Seems to be pretty much nonsensical. Well, if you can win a pawn on e5 in the Nimzor Larson, usually it's pretty good. So <laughs> I did win a pawn here pretty much right away. There, there is one line where you can sacrifice this pawn, but I can't, I can't attest to its soundness, let's say. I told Jappy, Jet, Chat GPT it was lying and it apologized to you. Oh, that was nice of it. What's up, Thomas? Thank you for tuning in today. If we get a Nimzo Larson, how about a Polish Sokolov orangutan? Maybe, yeah, I might be able to do that. That's B4 on move one. Hmm. I think I'm just going to take here and trade down. Maybe play d4 after that. Looks like a decent move. Could have taken with the pawn too. I don't know which one's better. But I'm up a pawn here. I'm happy to just trade and, and castle. 
try to win the game. Chat GPT is just autocorrect on steroids. I don't even think it has a memory, so chess is naturally not its strong suit. Thank you, Charles, for the prime. Thanks for subbing to the Lee Chess Twitch channel. Appreciate it. What's up, Rohan? Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. What are our numbers like right now? 186 watching on YouTube. Wow, 340 on Twitch. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I have the bathtub formation over here, so you know we're going to win. <laughs> okay, let's play here. So that knight e4 can be met by queen takes d5. Don't think I'm going to get forked here, but I got to be careful. A little bit careful. Knight c3, I have rook back to d2. And there, maybe here. How about that? Oh, that's great to hear, Agro Shim. Agro says, Lee chess plays are a staple of my Sunday evenings. Thanks for doing them. Hey, thank you for watching. Okay, now I think Black's position is on the verge of collapse. There's too much stuff hanging. We're already up two pawns. Just don't blunder, John. <laughs> is that true, Jobius? <laughs> People are just copying and pasting in stuff that chat GPT <laughs> is spitting out. It's kind of funny. Can you play next? Well, you can send me a challenge. Definitely send me a challenge. I'm not taking a uh, request to play like one-on-one -on -one requests, you have an equal chance of being selected as everyone else. But go ahead and send me a challenge. My username is Fins. And this pawn can't be stopped. All right. Thank you for the game, Liam. Yeah, so... Personally, when playing against the Nimza Larson, I do not like to put a pawn on e5. It's a perfectly legit move. A lot of people do like to play it, but it does become a target. So if you're going to play this way, I would recommend playing knight, knight c6 here. And then white usually goes e3, looking for bishop b5. There's a bunch of theory in this position, but that's how it usually goes down. Thanks for the game. Okay, Caillou M. Moving right along here. Let's play in English in this one. Does anyone ever use the voice chat feature on Lee Chess? We've talked about this before. I don't think anyone's ever clicked on that button. <laughs> I still haven't clicked on it, even though we spent part of a stream talking about it. I'm kind of scared. I don't know what would happen. Hey, John, do you know what, where there are any books slash places out there where I can train strategy in a puzzle format? I love tactics puzzles, but struggle with strategy play. Yeah, you know, I wish there were more options like that, more resources out there. I actually saw a Reddit post the other day about a, from a grandmaster who made a site for positional puzzles. I think he was testing it out. Can't remember the name of it. I think Chess Tempo has some strategic puzzles you can drill of course like on chessable there are courses dedicated to strategy but i think you're talking about like a puzzle trainer type thing for strategy but yeah if anyone has any suggestions definitely let them know that's such a random feature to have <laughs> I'm going to try it sometime. I'm going to try the voice chat. It can't be worse than a Call of Duty lobby or something. <laughs> yeah, seriously, have, has anyone in chat actually clicked on this? 
We need to know. We need to get to the bottom of this. Bonkers says nope. Charles says never. I think if you actually click on this, it's like an Easter egg. You become an owner of Lee Chess. Like Tebow actually like steps down and the replacement for Lee Chess is the person who clicks on it. <laughs> He's like, all right, you've explored the far ends of the site. I trust you to run it in the future to be a good steward of Lee Chess going forward. That's right, yeah, like the uh, online chess equivalent of the sword and the stone. Mm. Twizcheck says, I've clicked it, it did nothing. <laughs> All right, so I've got some pressure here and here. I'm trying to think if there's a way I can, like, bait bait my opponent into taking this pawn somehow and deliver mate. All right, watch this. Let's see if this works. Oh, no, my pawn. Nah, black's going to see it. F6. It was too obvious. But I think we're still working with a great position here. This is nice. I'm going to go C5 next move. And the time situation is hugely in my favor. Both people have to click it at the same time. Ah, interesting. Okay. Oh, Black's sacrificing something. Sacrificing material. Oh, that's cool. If you both click on it, it works. I'll have to keep that in mind. Mm, let's go H3. Just trying to guide this to victory. Take this. Take this. Too much pressure. Okay. Black swinging for the fences here. I don't blame them. With only seconds on your clock, what can you do? All right. Thank you for the game, Kayo. Let's see in this one. Uh, I think if you're going to go C6 on move two, this is kind of, of a reversed Alapin. Reverse C3 Sicilian. You probably should go ahead and try to work up to D4 or D5 rather. I think that would be the way to go. If I recall, like you can try other ways. Yeah, Knight A6 is played a fair amount. But I think D5 is the principled move. Because in the game, you put the pawn on D6. You kind of settled for a little more of a passive setup. And that felt like it was to my advantage. Especially with that dark score bishop I set up. Thank you for the game. Who's up next? Domino Domino. I remember you. Good luck. Okay, another D4 game. Hmm. Someone wanted an English rat, so let's try to play that. But of course, someone smelled a rat. They knew I was trying to go for E5. So Domino plays Bishop F4, London. D6 is kind of a nice move to play against the London because you can get E5 in pretty quickly. Call dominoes, yeah. <laughs> Let's play e5. Now, this will be a test for domino. They're going to move their dark square bishop, but they should not play knight f3 after that. Do not play knight f3. Next. Don't do it. It's part of the London. You're going to get forked if you do, though. No. You're thinking about it. Okay, good. Pawn e4. Good move.
Can you reverse Smith Mora the English? Yes, you can. Yep, I've seen people play that. Don't think it's very good, but you can play that way. Hello, Rohan. Thank you for your question. Do you have any more plans for Chess Rivals videos? Yeah, you know, I haven't done that in a long time, but it might be time at some point in the near future. Yeah. I played like Simon Williams, Niklas Hushinbet, uh, Danny Wrench I played many times. We had a series. That, actually, that was the original Chess Rivals. So yeah, it's a fun time. Played Andras Toth. Hey, thank you, Full Metal Chess, for the raid. Nine viewers coming in. Greetings, greetings. This is Lee Chess Plays. This is a two-hour extravaganza where I play viewers on Lee Chess. Ooh, we got a big fork here. Anyone can challenge. Just has to be three plus zero and has to be standard chess. You can send fins, F-I-N-S, that's me, a challenge. I think I can take here. It's a fancy move. Discovery on this bishop. If bishop takes e7, I would play knight takes c3 check. Yes, welcome raiders. Let's pin here. F5, e4 coming. Oh, very nice, Ro Rojas. Started the 100 endgames course. Very nice. Yeah. You'll be occupied with that one for a while. It'll be great for you. Let's push F5. I like this move. Defends the bishop. Also attacks on E4. Good stuff. Hey, John, love your videos. Any tips on how to get over 500? Been stuck there for a bit and doesn't feel like I'm improving. So probably you need to um, work on your sense of danger and try to stop blundering because at 500 rated, almost all your games are decided by big blunders for you and your opponent. Check out the hanging piece puzzles on Lee Chess. I was mentioning this earlier in the stream. If you go to puzzle dashboard and then puzzle themes, Try drilling the uh, hanging piece puzzles. That would really help you. Play longer games. If you're not already, don't play Blitz. Don't play Bullet for improvement. You can play them for fun, but probably you should be playing minimum 15 minutes per side. Why did I drop that? Just I'm talking about hanging pieces. <laughs> mm. At least it was only a pawn and not a bishop. Um... And this is checkmate, actually. Check out my chess fundamentals and climbing the rating ladder videos, too. Yes, thank you for the game, Domino Domino. So I think you should play knight f3 first here to at least hinder the e5 move for a while. So bishop f4 and then bishop d3 did allow me to play e5 a little more easily. Thank you for the game. Oh, Sali Bovich. Here we go. Good luck to you. I got to be on my game here against Sali. I got to be on my game. I'm just reviewing our recent play. Okay. Yeah, Sali's dangerous. All right. I played Carol Khan. I played Sicilian. Let's play, mm, I don't know, Knight C6 move two. The Nimzovich variation. How about that? And then. All right, we'll go to e4, e5, playing a scotch. How to make it interesting here. You can play stuff like bishop b4. There's theory. I used to play this a little bit. I kind of don't remember a whole lot about this variation, but I'll try. I will try. Let's go a5. Yes, the scotch. Kind of a quirky variation. Both sides winding up with uh, somewhat oddly placed queens. I played d5 here? I don't know. That could be kind of boring if I play d5. 
Let's play this first. Introduce a little bit of tension here. Maybe A4 now. I don't know. This seems interesting just to put pressure on these points. The puzzles on Lee Chess are a game changer. Yeah, they're excellent. They're really well, well done. I don't think people even know much about the tools that are available on Lee Chess. Many, many people are like shocked by how immersive and, and useful the tools are. Let's go here. Being a little aggressive here. Trying to threaten A3. Yes, they are all from games played on Lee Chess. That is correct. And you can like upvote or downvote a puzzle. And so the community decides like which puzzles are good and should remain in the uh, rotation. Most puzzles not only on Lee Chess are from real games. Yes, I agree to some extent, although I've noticed the chess.com puzzles seem a lot more composed, many of them. Maybe someone can confirm, but I like the ones that are clearly from a game and more game-like. Have I seen the Edwin Adams versus Carlos Repetto 1920 game? So sick. Yeah, that's an awesome game. That's the ultimate deflection game. Can confirm. Amazing concluding sequence in that one. Featuring a white queen going around the, the board trying to sacrifice herself for a, a back rank mate. Ace Fox says, absolutely, chess.com is more composed. Yeah, that, that's my impression too. It could, it could vary by rating level though. Absolutely. So I'm up a full piece here. Probably should have taken that pawn on e5, although then I would have got pinned. Let's just try to get castled now. Twenty six seventy five rating on Lee Chess, pretty low. <laughs> well, thank you. Any tips on getting over 1,200? Also, any resources for rook endings? Uh, I'd say same recommendation from earlier, largely. Play longer games, solve puzzles, work on your sense of danger. Check out my climbing the rating ladder and climbing the um, or chess fundamentals series. 9B1. It's a funny move. I almost don't want to take that knight because it seems so poorly placed over there. Let's do this. We'll pivot to this square, threaten 92. Sally Boach sneaking a rated game in. Yes, he's after my 2675 rating. Let's take here. Come in with the rook. Maybe queen c3, just start creeping forward. Oh, and 92 is a game changer, a game ender. Thank you for the game, Sally. Yeah, I I'm not too familiar with the theory in this. Let's just pop this open. A5 has been played. It's the second most popular move here. Usually black plays queen e6 first, unblocking the bishop. Yeah, I don't know about this b3 plan. It does give me kind of a hook to work with with a4. So maybe I should have played that right away. I did feel like your position was pretty uncomfortable, like right around here. But the engine does say you can keep it together with queen c2, defending here. And then if a3, your queen has taken the burden off your knight as well. So that is probably the way to go. But yeah, this one lost a piece and I don't think it's possible to recover after that. Thank you for the game. Okay, Fleo, 2305. Let's play d4. Good luck to you. Ryan says, the only thing I'd like to see in Lee Chess is the option to nest 
folders for chapters and studies, allowing for inserting full games and common variations more easily. Let me try to understand that because I use the Lee Chess study tool a lot. Nesting folders or chapters. So do you mean going beyond the chapter limit, which is uh, 64 games? Or the um, study limit, I, I should say, which is 64 chapters? Okay, let's go. Let's go Queen A4. What's up, Lopare? Nice of you to join us. Greetings. Hey, John, are you familiar with reading the old style of chess notation, like pawn to queen four, knight to king, bishop three? Yes, I can, but it kind of hurts my head. <laughs> yeah, that's descriptive notation. What is my FIDE rating? I've been inactive for a few years, but my FIDE rating is, I think, 2446. It hurts everyone's head? Yeah, true. <laughs> Algebraic is the way to go. Definitely. All right, so I feel like I'm a little bit better here. I've got some pressure down this file. It's nice to set up the rook opposite the enemy queen. D takes C5 could be a thing coming up. I don't know that I'll play it immediately, though, because if I take, black might actually take with the knight. And then I take D8, and they take my queen. And surprisingly, I don't think I have anything there. So let's just do this first. Do you have any advice to break 2100 on Lee Chess? We're just going to keep climbing up the rating ladder, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, 2100 is pretty good. So the higher you go, the less, the less general advice applies, right? I'd have to see your games probably. In the queen's gambit decline, how long should white wait before developing the dark square bishop? As usual, it depends on the variation. I prefer to develop it pretty quickly. So that's why I play the exchange variation. But your mileage may vary. It, it generally gets developed pretty quickly, though, to f4 or g5. <clears throat> Again, I'm kind of tempted to take, but I don't know if the timing is quite right to do it. Eh, I think I will do it. Take and then queen back to c2. This is still uncomfortable for black. Do I have any norms? Yes, I have one GM norm. One Grandmaster norm. All right, so my rooks are deployed to the usual squares here. I'm still kind of banking on that pressure I have down the file. That prevents black from entertaining ideas like this. I think my opponent's playing pretty well, though. I don't really have a whole lot to work with here. Knight e5, maybe. Meet queen here with knight d7. Oh, wait, that doesn't work at all. This knight's guarding. Scratch that idea. I could play b4, perhaps. That actually just might be a good move. Yeah, let's do it. And then try to take here. Queen for two rooks. Yeah, let's go for it. And now on king h7, do I pin or do I take this pawn? Probably take this one. My pieces are a little scattered, so just making sure there's no forks or anything. Taking that pawn's pretty nice because now I have rook h8 as an idea or bishop d3. Wait a minute. Is there any force mate? Probably not. Probably not quite yet. Let's just take back here. Mm-hmm. I imagine I'm very close to force mate in this position. Probably multiple good ways to play this. Um, looking, looking, looking. I think I'm just going to go check and then knight e5. But there's probably a better way to play that. Pr 
probably a better way. Let's play to double up the rooks. I feel like I can take this pawn whenever I want, so we're just going to try to come here. Comes back to defend. All right, let's take. Go here. And then, I don't know, check. Here. Check. Here. Oh, did I have rook c8 on the previous move too? Okay, that would have been a little more direct. Main in two. But I think this is good enough to win. Thanks for the game, Fleo. Yeah, so queen b6, b4 turned out to be good, I think. That said, black is better here, according to the engine, prior to that happening. Knight e4, knight a4, so it wants a discovery. Yeah, queen b6, b4 was the turning point, allowing this whole sequence. Yeah, I didn't see a force made here. Wasn't seeing it. Lots of ways to play. If you think, though, for a long period of time here with, with less than a minute on your clock, it's not going to go well for you either way. Yeah, interesting. So this is still competitive up through almost the end, but I think very hard for black to play when their king is constantly open to the elements. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for the game, Fleo. Who's up next here? All PL. I know you're watching. Good luck to you. Just don't play the Janssen Korchnoi. Ah, oh, yeah, that's the gambit. That's the gambit I played the other day. The Janssen Korchnoi gambit against the Dutch. H3 and G4. Okay, we're playing a main line here. I'm going to play h4 and then knight e2. This is a line that I like to, to dabble in. I'm trying to go to f4. Trying to attack that bishop. Build up some pressure against f7 and possibly e6 as well. Yeah, that last game was another two rooks against queen situation. Which, which are always interesting. Missing rook c8 was marked as a blunder. Understandable. Yeah, I think that should be it, a, a blunder. Okay, so I've got some pressure on f7. Maybe queen e2. So if e6, I can sacrifice here. I like the look of that. Already kind of uncomfortable for black to develop. Maybe knight b6, though? I don't know. Knight b6 and then queen takes d4 is the threat. When you have a mate, look for a better move. That's, that's exactly right. Truer words have never been said. When you have checkmate, look for better. All right, I'm going to sack this pawn. We're not going to play c3 in the attempt to preserve the bishop pair. We're going to sacrifice and see what happens. Did I have bishop takes f7 after knight b6? Bishop takes f7. Mm, I don't know. I mean, I get queen e6 in, but then king back to e8. Wasn't really seeing anything there. Let's take this now. Did you guys see that Magnus played his last game as a world champion today? Played against David Howell uh, in the Norwegian League, which you can probably find under the watch tab if you go to broadcasts. So, kind of end of an era, right? Of course, he's not retiring, as far as I'm aware, but um, last game as a world champion. I guess he doesn't have an event planned before the Ding Nepo World Championship. Isn't the World Championship in a month? Yeah, it is. 
I maybe could have taken this pawn. Let's go here. I mean, this is the least hyped world championship I can remember <laughs> in recent years. I don't know, though. I live in the U.S., so I feel like um, a Russian challenger, or sorry, yeah, Russian and Chinese players in the mix maybe alter my perception a little bit, but just from what I've seen, the, the interest in this match is extremely low. Um, which is a shame because they're two fantastic players, Ding and Nepo. But with, without that Magnus aura, I think it's hard to get people interested in it as much. And Pawn Checkmate. Thank you, PL, for the game. We really appreciate it. So I wonder if Queen takes D4 was, was justified here. Yeah, I mean, it seems playable for you. Knight BD7. But the position's kind of dangerous, right? Because you haven't moved your E-pawn. You have some development issues. Could be tough to coordinate. Could be tough to coordinate. Thanks for the game. Um, if you're playing this line in the future, we can look in the database. Yeah, usually black does play E6 right away. And you have to constantly watch sacrifices. But you play E6 and then Bishop D6, Queen C7. And go from there. All right. Who's up next? The bread man. Enjoy your, enjoyed your review of your game against Ding. Yeah, that was awesome that I got to play him in the Pro Chess League. Yeah. I don't know. Um, it's really hard to predict who's the favorite in the upcoming match. I would say Nepo. He's been playing really well. Obviously, he was dominant in the candidates. Ding looked a little shaky in his last event, Tata Steele. Seemed like he was experimenting a little bit, but then again, that's probably because he had the match coming up. And he wanted to hide his opening preparation. Who will face Nepo? It's... Uh, Grandmaster Ding Luren, Chinese Grandmaster, fantastic player. Uh, one of the, the, the notable things about him, he at one point had a 100-game undefeated streak. 100 games at a very high level where he did not lose a game. The golden streak. Yeah, you guys know what I'm setting up with this H4 move. The old Greek gift. I'd actually be really curious. So those of you um, maybe watching from Asia, other parts of the world, beyond like the US and, and Europe, which I know is a huge proportion of our audience here. I mean, chess is an international game. And I'm just really curious, have you guys seen much interest in the upcoming world championship match based on your location? Maybe you follow like your national federations, chess news. Um, Cause I personally have seen hardly anything about it. Like no match previews, no build up articles, hype. Shows says not much hype. Three Y E Lock says not really. Lady Firebird says nothing. First I've heard is from you. TX Mate says I know it's in Kazakhstan. Yeah, they only got the venue very recently. That is true. Okay, so typical thing here. I've sacrificed the um the bishop, and we're gonna shut the door now. G6, prevent the king from escaping. Yeah, Magnus had a very long undefeated streak as well. Yes, he did. How is Ding in the world champion? Uh, world world championship? He got second in the candidates. Nepo got first, and because Magnus is not defending, the rules say that uh, the winner of the candidates and the player who plays second play a match. Let's go Queen H7 to conserve energy. 
Queen H8 is one square further up the board. Yeah, thank you for the game. Appreciate it, Breadman. Oh, he said, I've got to go. I like that. That's a throwback comment. <laughs> uh, so H4, yeah, this is a typical setup move for the sacrifice. I'm propping up the knight on G5. And I can't do it right away, right? Because take on H7, king takes H7, knight G5. Black has bishop takes G5, right? And I don't have my H pawn to leverage through the H file here. So I think the position is already pretty uncomfortable after H4. Those of you who play D4, you'll get into situations like this, especially out of this type of opening, semi tarash or martial defense. You can remember this H4 move. And if they go H6, let's say, I like to play queen e2, looking for queen e4 into h7. All right, thanks for the game. Mistborn, good luck to you. 2155, let's play e4. Breadman got baked to a crisp. You guys are cruel. <laughs> D3. A very limp move, but let's play it. Magnus has played this before, offering an endgame. What's up, Chess Dory? Tim Blizzard says, no real interest in Australia in the match or haven't seen much interest. Yeah, it's just really a shame. Because I like watching both those players. I mean, Nepo, as I said, has been on fire. Yes, he lost decisively to Magnus in the last World Championship, but that's Magnus. Um, this this uh, type of thing happens against Magnus. So I, I really enjoy his, his combative playing style, and I admire his time management. And Ding is just such a phenomenal player who, to me really has just lacked some consistency in big moments. To me, like, Ding seems like a great... Uh, you know in sports, they, they have, like, regular season player versus playoff player. Ding is, like, an amazing regular season player. He just always, you know, putting in phenomenal results right around 2,800. But he's lacked that, uh, that X factor in big moments. And getting second in the candidates, winning that game on demand against Hikaru was to me like the first time he's really shown himself that, hey, like it might be my time. Because we know he's been an elite player for years. What's the chance Ding plays 1e4 in the championship? I would say probably not too great. Maybe he has something prepared in e4 from the white side as a last resort, but I would expect d4, knight, knight f3, c4 maybe. He's played a lot of English. It's because he plays like three tournaments a year, he doesn't have much opportunity. Yeah, he's fairly inactive compared to a lot of the top players. That is, that is true. I feel like we don't really know much about Ding. The way he trains. I mean, he claims to work by himself. And I wonder if that's still true in the lead up to the World Championship, which is nearly unheard of for a top player. I think he's had some people helping him at various times, but I can't even like name someone. Because I think he's largely preferred to work, work by himself. Okay, should I take this pawn or go knight e6? I think both are good options. I'm going to take this pawn. This bishop seems pretty bad, so I'm not particularly interested in winning it. He said he tries to be active online. That's where I played him, in the Pro Chess League. He played under... Um, oh, what's his username? It's like Chef something. Something Chef. On chess.com. Chef's house. Yes, thank you. Chef's house. Pretty dominating pawn formation here. 
restricting my opponent's pieces. Give a check. Come here. I think I'm going to win further material now. Ah, I could play King E8, I guess. Let's take this and then take here. Line up for C6. And if black puts a rook here, I get the fork. This is a very unusual pawn fork. You don't often see a pawn forking two rooks on the seventh rank. All right, thank you, Mistborn, for the game. Yeah, this line, I saw Magnus play this in the Norwegian League like a year ago. It offers um, to go into this end game, which I think is a little bit better for white. I can go bishop f4, c3, king c2. But my opponent opted to keep stuff on board, but I always felt like I was somewhat better here with the bishop pair in the space. Thanks for the game. Wow, did I get a 99% accuracy on that game, or is it still grinding? That's got to be adjusted downwards. That must come down. It's still working through the game analysis. Well... <laughs> I went up to 100%. I got promoted. <laughs> Lee Chess, you're, you're not supposed to do that to me. Don't pump up my ego. <laughs> okay, back down to 99%. <laughs> Still working. The game analysis is a little bit slow. It's like move by move going backwards. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in. We still got about 20 minutes left in the stream today. Yeah, it's over 200 on YouTube, over 400 on Twitch. Thanks again, guys, for uh, hanging out today. I'm really curious where this number will end up. 97. I think that's the final number. All right, we'll take it. 96, whatever. But yeah, if you're looking for yet another weapon against the Carol Khan, you can think about this line offering to go into this endgame. All right, who's up next? Leo Zabron. 1968. Let's do it. Is there a rule against keep against keeping the audio on if you get picked? No rule. Up to you. Uh, Leo's, are you there? Knock, knock. Guess not. Yeah, I would recommend for your um, improvement purposes to not listen to me. There is a delay, by the way. There's like a 10 or 15 second delay, so it may not even be that helpful to listen to me. But, of course, if you want to listen, no problem. All right, Smith Mora Gambit. Uh, I don't really feel like fighting the Smith Moore Gambit, so I'm going to play Knight F6. This is one of the best ways to decline it if you want. How to destroy the Petrov defense. Hmm. That's a tough one. Are we talking Petrov or Stafford Gambit within the Petrov? <laughs> I think my answer will be a lot different for both those options. You didn't get chosen yet? Oh, there's still time. We still got time for a couple games. Okay, let's again try for this bishop g4 idea. I do like this whenever I can get it. Tim says, stop cheating, John. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll try to make a blunder to make up for it. Thank you, and Lee Chess. Yes, thank you to Lee Chess. As always, for uh, just existing, really. Thank you for being you, Lee Chess. Do you guys have any questions about Lee Chess features or anything? I'm happy to answer. Uh, I'm sure Lopare or some of the mods in the chat would be happy to answer too. What's the name of the chessable book on the Mora? Probably Mayhem in the Mora is what you're thinking of by Mark Esserman. He's the, he's the guy in the Smith Mora. That was written many years ago, but it's still relevant, I think.
Tafaska says Stafford is trash. I mean, true Petrov with Knight takes E4 and D5. Yeah, see, if you're going to ask that, that's tough to answer, Tafaska, because the Stafford is just one of the best openings. Or, <laughs> don't quote me on that. Do not clip that. Stafford is not one of the best openings. It's terrible. You should all feel bad for playing it. The Petrov itself is one of the best openings. <laughs> As evidenced by, uh, like, Fabiano relying on it in 2018 against Magnus in the World Championship. Tons of other elite players playing it. Vladimir Kramnik. We're talking past world champions. Vichy Anand. It's tough. I mean, I, I don't really have a line I can give you that's like, yep, that's the silver bullet against the Stafford. Or, again, I'm confusing the two. Smith Moore. <laughs> I can't talk openings. I'm done. <laughs> Petrov. I've played at various times, like the main line with knight takes e5, and then you just come back to f3, then d4, bishop d3. I've also played knight c3, so when black takes on e4, playing knight c3. And then you trade, you, you accept the doubled c pawns, and you castle uh, queenside. I think the lines with d4 are also interesting. I believe that's what Magnus played against Nepo in one of their games where uh, Nepo got destroyed in the World Championship. So e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, d4, move three. Oh, it's too late. It's clipped. Darn. That was a terrible move on my part. I did not see queen takes b3 at all. Well, I'm doing what you guys said, which is I'm making up for uh, the high accuracy in the last game and actually making some blunders. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I think I am rattled. I'm rattled by the Stafford admission. I think you're right about that. <laughs> I can't believe... That Freudian slip. <laughs> you should check out Chess Fundamentals Undefended Pieces video. Noted. <laughs> yeah, I played Knight Takes B3. Thinking I was winning material, that I was winning in exchange. In reality, terrible move. Knight takes f3, f5. I was trying to avoid this. I was trying to go for more here. But actually, yeah, I do have f5 followed by bishop g5 coming in. That would be nice. Attacking the two rooks. Okay, thanks for the game, Beckett's. Yeah, so you don't really want to take on d6 this early. Usually white plays knight f3 and supports the center. That would be a better, better option. Lots of theory there. Maybe look into it if you get a chance. All right, who's up next? DJ Nas. I remember you. We played a few times. Good luck. Maybe a Clarendon court defense in this one. C5 followed by F5. Oh, wow. That's a transposition you don't see very often. Smith Mora transposition. Do I take it this time? All right, I guess I'll take the Smith Mora gambit this time because I, I declined it last time. But you guys want to see me take it, right? Someone asking if I stream every day. I don't stream every day, but I'd say maybe once every two days. Roughly. All right, this is one of the many setups Black can use against the Smith Mora. Very complicated already. The engine's going to like Black here, but that doesn't mean much in these openings. I love turning the old Benoni into a Smith Mora. <laughs> wow. Let's go here. Yeah, I, I do have short streams sometimes. That is correct. Like um, 30 minute streams. 
All right, so there's definitely some pressure developing here. I need to be careful. Let's go uh, queen, queen to Bartholomew 8. Trying to escape the pin. I want to go knight g6 in the near future. That's the plan. Uh, what do I think about the Karash Gambit out of the Scandinavian? Can you remind you remind me what that Gambit is? The Karash Gambit. Oh yeah, White's coming after me here. Knight d5, typical move in the Smith Mora. I'm gonna play this in reply. Hit the bishop. Now bishop g3. I'm thinking d6 here. I'm thinking d6, knight b6, rook a7. I have this defended. I mean, very complicated already. I may take d5 in the future if I get a chance, but white is hoping that they can open the, the e file in that case. This is scary. I mean, DJ Nass knows what they're doing, which is surprising for a player opening d4 trying to get into a Smith Mora. But um, you do encounter, as a d4 player, you encounter people playing c5 a fair amount online. So it's good to have a weapon or two against it. Probably not a bad option now that I think about it. Because you might catch some players who are not Sicilian players going into this. All right, I think bishop e7. If e5, I can just take, right? So yeah, let's play bishop e7 and castle. I feel better about this position now because I am going to get castled. Should be kind of hard for white to get compensation here. To get comp. Let's play knight e5. I like this move. Blocks off this bishop. Opens my light square bishop. Right. And now maybe knight c4. Or rook c8 intending knight c4. There's a possible idea here I should be aware of. Maybe queen a7 first. Let's do that. Hmm. Attack here. Try to swarm with the knights, maybe. Mm, I don't know if this is that great for me. Take, take, g3, followed by f4. Thing is, this dark square pin is going to be annoying. So I think it's okay. f4, bishop, f6. But I didn't plan that. That was just luck. Karash Gambit is played by Jonathan Schrantz. That says it all. <laughs> Okay, noted. I've heard of it before. I don't know the move order, but I've definitely heard of it. Yeah, so now my idea is take with the pawn and use the pin. But I backdoor I backdoored into this. This wasn't planned. Okay, d3, trade queens. Could I take there? I think I can actually take on e2 at that point. That's that's a funny operation. Let's do it. I can also take this one, but I think it's better to take this one because then I'm actually threatening to promote with white's bishop being unable to take. Yeah, now we take and I want a piece out of that. Trade. Bring the king up. Got to take Ampassant. Mandatory. White playing for stalemate. All right. Thank you, DJ, for the game. Yeah, interesting one. You had me under pressure with that 95 idea. Let's check the computer evaluation. I am very curious. What do you guys think? What's it going to say here? I feel like I feel like white might have a good move here, but I don't know what it is. Oh, maybe it's just knight b6 right now. Because that threatens checkmate and the knight. That's probably the move. This, this, to me, felt like the most vulnerable I was in the game. After I got in d6 and stabilized, 
it was fine, but I, I would imagine knight b6 is strong here. It is, but so is bishop g3. Hmm. Yeah. So it actually does want me to play g5 at this moment. And then knight g6. Okay, so this is safer. White can still try this. I mean, this is why people don't like to accept the Smith Mora oftentimes. Because the play is tangled here. It's complicated, very complicated. Even if the engine likes black, that doesn't matter when you're having to handle the, the black pieces in a pressure situation. So white loses the thread when white plays knight c3. That move gets the double question mark. The engine says you got to keep going here with knight uh, rook c1. Leave the knight on d5. And then if I take, rook takes c6. Brutal. Look at that. Try to lure this bishop into the line of fire, then take. And my king is open to the elements. Even in a situation like this where black is up in exchange, it's hard for me to get my king out of the center. Um, yeah, and even if I do, there's further attacks that come in here. Pretty amazing. This is plus four for, uh, for white, even though black has, has castled. Wow. Interesting moment there. That's the type of accuracy required, though, from the attacking side, too. Thanks for the game. Really fun one. Let's try to play two more games. Hey, TX Mate, good luck to you. This guy knew his stuff. He did, yeah. DJ Nass really knew what he was doing there. Are we going to see a Petrov? Knight F6? Yes. Well... Let's take. Now, TX mate, okay. So, Tafasca, you're going to see a main line here. I guess I'll play the knight c3 line I was mentioning. This, this is what I usually play in this position. I don't honestly think it's anything that special. But it tends to throw black sometimes, so. Hmm. D5. Pawn to D5. Understandable move. Can I go here against this move? Maybe black has some issues because queen e7, knight takes d7. Shades of the famous game that Anand lost in six moves. In the Petrov. Texas mate missed a force win with, force win with knight c6. Yes, right, knight c6 on move number three. Should have played Stafford. Okay, bishop f5, then d3, though. Yeah, and if this move takes... It's, it's very similar to what happened in that Anand game, or what could have happened. Which was also this line of the Petrov, too. Yeah, I think black's busted, because queen e6 keeps the knight defended, but knight takes c7. So this is over Red Rover. Hey, Stadmeister, thank you for gifting us up to Mr. Henry. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Thanks everyone for tuning in and supporting today. Yeah, there's no good solution here for Black. Black's going to have to lose at least a piece, I think. Also, Stefano Fall, subbing with Twitch Prime. Thank you guys very much. You can use your Twitch Prime on any streamer if you have uh, Amazon Prime. You can use it once per month completely for free. You just have to connect your Twitch and Amazon accounts. Yeah, Queen D6 will take the knight. And then let's go here. Do you always stream here or do you have your own channel? I have my own channel as well. Yeah, so I stream pretty frequently there. Three, four times a week. Was it already lost after Queen E2? I think after Queen E2, Black needs something creative here. Probably they're losing a pawn at least. Which is interesting. It's good for me to know because I don't think I've ever faced D5 in this position. But this is probably why Queen E2 I think is good. But maybe we'll see afterwards.
Nice, Morphe's Law, yeah. Hey, what's up, Mark R? Thoughts on the Benko, John? We were talking about it earlier. I think it's a very risky opening nowadays. It's fun if you get some of the like mainstream accepted lines where White's just defending down the A and the B files for a long time. Like then I think it can be interesting and, you know, practically useful. But there's a lot of modern lines that cast doubt on the Benko. Even some of the Benko decline lines. I think are pretty rough for black. Yes, thank you for the game, TX Mate. So I think. I do think here you got to take the knight or maybe play knight f6. I've seen that a couple times. Let's check, though, on the d5 move. Yeah, queen e2. So this is a frequent problem in the Petrov for black, as evidenced by the famous variation, knight takes e5, knight takes e4. If you ever play a beginner and they think to copy you, they might go for this. I've seen it so many times. I've probably played 100 games in this type of thing back when I was giving simuls and stuff a lot. Queen e2, hit the knight, and if the knight moves, you have knight c6, check, win the queen. So there's shades of that. The famous Zapata versus Anand game, uh, the loss by Anand, and I think six moves, when knight takes e5, d6, knight c3, knight takes e4, knight c3, and then Anand played bishop f5, parroting the suggestion of something he had seen in analysis, uh, which ended up being a draw a previous game that had been played in this line. But queen e2 is winning here. And same problem, actually. If d5, d3 wins the knight. And queen e7 is met by knight d5 with this threat, also eyeing up the pawn, and here. If the black queen goes to like d8 or d7, d3 wins the knight again. So watch for that motif. That's why black usually takes c3 and then plays bishop e7. You'll study that knight c3 line? Yeah, go for it, Tabasco. All right, thanks again, Texas mate. Let's play our final game of the day. You guys know what it is. It's the blindfold game. Okay, I'm going to turn blindfold pieces on, so you're going to see a blank board when I accept the challenge. Nothing is wrong with your stream. You're in the right place. You don't have to refresh. If you want to see the game, go follow me on Lee Chess. My username is Fins. We're going to play whoever we get here. Hey, Studmeister. You uh, just subscribed, and you happen to get a game as well. Totally not rigged. I promise, guys. But good luck to you. Thank you for being a Lee Chess patron. Let's play an Italian game. Ooh, two knights defense. All right, knight, knight g5. Let's make this complicated. Let's do it. Go after f7. Who out there plays this line for white or black or both colors? I know many of you do. Black has to know what they're doing here. Yeah, knight takes d5, because we're going to get the fried liver now. Knight takes f7. Fry that liver, that's right. Now, this line is survivable for black, but they really have to know what they're doing. They really, really have to know what they're doing. They have to play king e6 here to have a chance. And that's a scary move to play. Trying to guard the knight on d5. Isn't the Polario defense the best line? Yes, I think the Polario is knight a5. Is that right? That is correct. Can you hide the moves? I think I could hide the moves, yeah, if I really wanted to. Mm. And now I get to deliver mate on f7. So sorry, Stan. That is the issue here. Queen f7 is checkmate. Yeah, so... If you're going to play this way, you have to know to play king e6, but I wouldn't recommend going into this. That's why on uh, d5, pawn takes, black usually plays knight a5, counterattack, knight d4, or b5. All those moves are actually playable. If you want to avoid this entirely, play bishop c5 on move three. That was so short. Another one? Yeah, we'll play one more blindfold game. So, uh, yeah, sorry, Stod, but you won't, you won't blunder this anymore. Look into this line. Again, I would avoid this entire thing with knight takes d5 for black. Look into knight a5 here, or make your life easier, play bishop c5 on move three. That way, knight g5 is met by queen takes. All right, let's play one more game. Who are we going to get? Ooh, wild card. 
1500 rated. Oh, but 1738 classical. Oh, Blitz, actually. So they just still have the question mark. Oh, this is a correspondence game? Well, we might be here for a while with that. That's why it said waiting for opponent. I, I've never seen that message before, so I think they're not online. <laughs> All right, well, that's an easy abort there. Okay, aut autism 1337. Let's do this. Let's play e4. We're going to again get e4, e5, knight f3. I'll play Italian game once more. Why not? Okay, same line. <laughs> Let's see what black knows in this line. Wait, what? Knight a5 here. I don't think that's too good. I can take on f7. I think I'm just going to take with a bishop, actually. Just take with the bishop. Yeah. I think black might have got their lines confused. Maybe jump the gun with knight a5. Takes. Yeah, let's go here. Attack this pawn. I think I can just take this one. Threatening knight g6. Fork on the king and the rook. Also, queen e2. Same idea as in the uh, Petrov. d6. This is not possible, right? Because the pawn guards. But I think knight g6 just wins the rook. Let's do it. Check. Take. And resigns. All right, so we got two quick wins with this opening. <laughs> yeah, knight a5 cannot be recommended. I wonder if they just got their move order confused and meant to play it in this position, which I was mentioning before. Yeah, because I wonder what the best move is here. d4 the engine's apparently calling for. d4 or bishop d5. Bishop b3's up there too. Also not bad. Twitch says, I don't even remember what I had for lunch. <laughs> yeah. Blindfold is interesting, man. It's interesting. I've been getting better at blindfold, just playing like one or two blindfold games a week on Lee Chess Plays. But it's still difficult. All right. I think we're going to call it, guys. This was awesome. As usual, thanks so much for tuning in to Lee Chess Plays today. Thanks, everyone, for challenging. How many games did we get in? 21. Okay, that's a little more than usual, so excellent. Sorry to those who didn't get a game. You can always re-challenge next week. And remember, there are other Lee Chess Plays streamers. Look for them throughout the week. Uh, Sabina Foister often streams. Women's Grandmaster. Other people stream, too. Uh, I saw... Um, Nate Solon streaming recently. He's a FIDE master. Looks like we're going to raid LaFong. Everyone say hi to LaFong when we get to his stream. Thanks to those watching on YouTube as well. You all have a great week. And thanks again to Lee Chess. Check out all the features. Remember, that puzzle feature, if you go to puzzles and then puzzle dashboard, puzzle themes, take a look at this. This is one of the more underrated and unknown features on Lee Chess that they have not only just the regular puzzles, which is a mix that you can drill, you can drill by phases of the game, by opening. If you're a Caro, Caro Con player, you want to drill by Caro Con defense, there's puzzles for that. In motif, I really like this hanging piece motif. 141,000 problems related to that. A tactic involving an opponent piece being undefended or insufficiently defended and free to capture. Good for building up your sense of danger. So check that out.